Greetings and thank you for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to explain how to read these uh, chord charts here in the uh, middle of the pages in part four. And uh, I will use one example today, and that example is from page two. So if you go to page two in part four, uh, I, I will go over this grade eight line right here and explain how to uh, use this chord chart to help you understand the chords. And then we can apply this to others as well. So I hope to make other videos like this in the future on uh, similar pages in here. The reason why I chose page two is because it's pretty simple with its primary chords. There's only two of them basically. And uh, the, the it doesn't have a lot of uh, secondary chords either. So it's pretty simple to understand harmonically, and which will be a good starting point for learning about how to read these little chord charts in here. So without any further ado, let's begin. Okay, so the first thing we want to do with chord charts is look at the primary chords here. Primary chords are the one, the four, and the five chord. So if we're in the key of G minor, and by the way, the soprano and the bass line are the same as the one, the video I posted about two days ago, where I was talking about how to read the outer parts. So I've basically just kept those the same and filled in the inner parts here, like it is on page two. Primary chords are the one, four, and the five chords. So in G minor, these primary chords will be, of course, G minor, that's the one chord. And uh, if you go up four from G, you get to C. So C is the fourth uh, or the subdominant tone in the G minor scale. So those, so the C chord, this would be C minor. The C minor chord is the natural minor chord because the uh, E flat is in the key signature. So it's C, E flat, G is the four chord. And the five chord is either a minor or a major. Usually it's a major chord, but not all the time. Occasionally you'll have minor five chords as well. But we can see that in this example here, I chose this because it's pretty simple. There's only two primary chords. There's the one chord and there's the five chord. That's all we have, just the one and the five. And then we have a five seven or maybe a couple five sevens. So that's basically all we have for the primary chord. The secondary chords are pretty simple. We only have three of them here. And so uh, by process of elimination, you can actually determine which chords are which. So even if you don't know very much about chords and, and harmony, by process of elimination, you can look at this and use it to help you determine where those chords are here. So let's do that. And then after that, we'll go over this cadences part here, and I will do a, a little explaining of these, these letters down here as well. So let's take the first chord, G minor. The G minor chord, if we look in our little key down here, I have all the seven possibilities of triads uh, from the musical letters here. If we look at the one that starts on G, we have G, B, D. So you want to look for any chord that has G, B, and D in it. And of course, B is going to usually be B flat, but you don't have to worry about that because that's taken care of with the key signature here. So just look for G, B, D. That's all you have to look for. So where are all the G, B, D chords? Well, that's not one of them. Uh, that has a D, but it doesn't have a G and a B in it. Um, what about this one here? Well, we have a G, two Gs, we have a B and a D. So we're going to say this is the one chord. I'm just going to put I'm put a little Roman numeral one like that. Let's find the next G, B, D chord. Well, look, this, this is not it, but look, G, we have, actually have two Gs here, soprano G and the alto G, D and, and, and B. So 
we're going to put one chord here. This happens to be, you see the bass note is um, B flat, the bass note is not G. So this means that it's in first inversion, first inversion. First inversion chords are indicated with a little six if, you, if you're using Roman numerals. So this would be a little small I with six, uh, superscript six after it, like that. This wouldn't be because that's root position because G is on the bottom. And uh, well, look at this. The next chord here is a GBD chord. We have a G, two Gs here, a B and a D. So that's, that's a G minor chord. Look at this, this not, no, not at all because uh, that's something different. Well, this one here, we have G, G, B, D. That's a G minor chord too. Look at this, we've one, two, three, so far out of three, four, five, seven chords, we've had four of those seven chords are G minor chords or, or the tonic chord in the key of G minor. This is not, that is not, that's not, that's not, that's not. This definitely is G, B, D. We have two Gs here, a B and a D. So we have one there. That's not, and that is. So that is a root position. So out of all of these chords, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. A total of six G minor chords. Basically, they're just all the same chord they're with just a slight rearrangement of the notes. So it doesn't matter where the notes are, it's still all G minor. Now, so we've, we've taken care of this. Okay, so I'll cross that one out. Let's find all the D major chords uh, where we have D major, not the seventh chords. Let's just, just do D major, which will be D, F, A. So we're going to look all through all the chords that have DFA in it. Let me give you a hint. It's most of the other chords that we haven't selected already, just by process of elimination, okay? So, well, this is one. So we have a five chord. We're just gonna put a Roman numeral five here because that's a D chord, a five chord in the key of G minor. Uh, it, uh, let's look at this one. Well, that's... Uh, let's see, D, F, A, we have, we have an F, two A's, but no D. That's almost one, but not quite. Well, we'll talk about that chord in a minute. D, F, A, D, F, A, well, we have a D, two D's, an F and an A, D, F, A. Well, here we go. So here's a five chord. I'm gonna put a Roman numeral five. Look how the bass note is not D. The bass note is not D. We have two Ds here, that's the root. D is the root. F sharp is the third, A is the fifth. Because the third is in the bass, it's first inversion. So it gets that little superscript six there. The reason why it's six is because the distance between the bass and uh, and the next and, and the next note up is six. You see that? So that's just sort of a shorthand for that. Uh, let's look at uh, well, that's one. That's not uh, D D F A. Well, D F A. We have a five chord right here. I'll put a big five. That's just a normal five in root position. And that's not. That's not. Uh, that is almost, we have a D, F, A, but we also have a C in it. So that's something, that, that's a seventh, we'll do that in a minute. Uh, D, F, A, no, that's also a seventh chord because it has a C in there. That house is also a seventh chord. So basically we have found all the just normal five chords. We have a five chord here, five chord here, which is in first inversion and a five chord here, so three of those. So that tells us that uh, all of the other ones are the D7 chords, the ones that aren't secondary chords. So the D7 chords are, well, it's not that one. I'll talk about that one in a, in a minute again. Uh, this, okay, look at this chord here. We have 
uh, basically, okay, so you have two choices actually. Uh, we have the secondary chords when there's an F sharp diminished chord, and there is a C sharp diminished seventh chord. So let's just find those. Let's just locate those first. F sharp, well, it's pretty easy because if you, this is most likely going to have an F sharp in it. This one most likely will have a C sharp in it. So all you have to do is look for the chords with the F sharp and the C sharp and you, and you have them found. So F sharp diminished. Well, here's one with an F sharp in it. Um, here's also an F sharp. There's, there's a bunch of them here, but if you look at, okay, if you look at this, that little circle, this means if you just have a circle, that means a diminished triad. It's not a seventh. But if you have a circle and a seventh, then you have an added seventh. So this is just a simple F sharp diminished triad, in which case the main notes, there's only three notes in that. And they will be they will be F A C. If if F if F is F sharp is the root, the bottom note, then it's going to be F A C. So let's look for F A C. Or it will be actually F sharp A C. Well, it's this one right here. So we have F sharp, we have two A's, we have a C. So this right here is the F sharp diminished. So I'm going to put here a seven, a V I I, because that's the seven chord of. G, if you, if you have G and you go down a half step from G, you get to F sharp, right? So F sharp is the seventh tone in the G minor scale. If you build a chord on that, you have the seven chord here. Because F sharp is not on the bottom, that's also a six. So it's actually be a seven diminished and then it'll have a six. I think some, there might be some notations where they don't have this, the circle there. It might be just a seven with a six. I'm, I can't remember. Anyway, I'm pretty sure that's how you would notate it. But remember that, that this is a diminished chord, not a diminished seventh. The function of diminished chords is usually to provide a transitional chord from a root position to a first inversion. So if you have a root position chord here and a first inversion chord of the same chord here, um, I would say probably 80% of the time when diminished chords appear like this, they're almost always in first inversion and they provide a transition from here to here. Do you see because the bass note is between those. So it's a perfect transitional chord. And so you'll be begin to hear those in your ear. If you if you whenever you hear a root position and then a first inversion chord, the chord after that, chances are the chord between very very often is a diminished chord because those are great transitional chords. So we found this one now let's uh, find, uh, let's do, actually, no, let's do this one next. Let's do the D7 chord. I forgot to, to find that. Well, the D7 chords will be um, here. So this is a 5, 7, a Roman numeral 5 with a 7. And this one as well, that's a 5, seven as well but here is here's the thing do you see how we have a d f a c d f a c they all go up by thirds so the c is the seventh so this is a five seven as i said before but look the bass note is the third it's not the root so in this case this is traditionally in music theory called a 6-5 chord, a 6-5 chord. 
and uh, that has to do with the distance apart from these. So see this, the distance from the bass note to this note here, that's a sixth here. And then, and then the distance from F to C, F to C is a, is a fifth, see? I know it's, it's, it's an octave, or no, yeah, it's like an octave and a fifth, but, but it's, it would be a fifth. So we have a, we have a, these indicate the distances apart from the bass to the other notes in the chord. So that's, that's a five, six, five chord if you want to use Roman numerals. And then here is another five, seven chord here. So all we have left are these two chords here. Okay, so we've taken care of this. Now let's let's look at uh, this one here, A flat major. Well, that obviously is this one because we have an A flat. This is known in music theory as the Neapolitan chord. The Neapolitan chord is a special chord that's built on the flat two. And it's almost almost always or usually at least in minor keys. So if you take G minor, what is the two of G minor? Well, A, if you go up to A, that's the two of G minor. And if you flat A, A becomes A flat. So that's the flat two. And it's a major two. So you see how that's a major two? Because that's A flat major. It's not A flat minor. And it's a, it's a really, uh, unique chord. It has a very unique sound to it. Bach used it rarely. He didn't use it really very often at all. Beethoven used it all the time. Beethoven loved the Neapolitan chords. So if you want to, if you want to do a little project, just uh, see how many Neapolitans you can find in Beethoven's music. It happens a lot, actually. Uh, Beethoven probably used them more than any other composer. So uh, this is the, uh, I'll just put a N for Neapolitan, that's the A flat major chord. And then we have the C sharp diminished seventh, which obviously is this one here. So C sharp diminished seventh will be a C, E, G chord, but it will be a C, E, G, B, because the B, we have to add the seventh above that. Remember, they go up by thirds. So we have a C, E, G, B. And that even goes from the bottom to the top. C, E, G, B. But C sharp, and then if, if you take C sharp, and then E natural, G, and B flat, those all go up by minor thirds or three half steps. So that makes it a fully diminished a C sharp uh, chord. And in this case, because it's leading up to the five chord, you see how you see how the bass note, Bach reaches the bass note C, and then look at, okay, the destination is going, going to be the to the dominant, which is the seventh chord here, the five seven. So if that's the destination, this is where he starts on the low point of the bass. You see how that goes up by a half step here? So that's a transitional chord, once again, just like this over here. See how this diminished chord functioned as a transitional chord from here to here? Well, this does the same thing. So we have the chord is built on, by the way, Neapolitan chords are usually in first inversions. Okay, so this is a sig, it's a first inversion because that's not the root. So we have that the C going up to C sharp, and that is that's why it says sharp four <laughs> diminished seven because functionally that's the four note in G minor. C is the four note in G minor, and then you sharp that. So if you wanted to put Roman numerals to it, it would be sharp four um, diminished seven, and it's in root position. So. It's not going to be in any one of the inversions where we will have to use other numbers like that. So that's, once again, a transitional chord that leads to the dominant here. And then uh, to the end, uh, actually, 
no, now that I think we, well, we have another one too. Actually, I didn't see that one. This is the same thing here. Uh, so we have a sharp for, this is the same thing. So we have C, E, G, B. We have C, E, G, B. So that's the same chord as that one. And do you see that now this and this provide the pillars, and now this one is sort of the transitional chord from this one to this one. See how that works? So it's this interrelationship between chords. Now this one is an inversion, and it's in the first inversion because C sharp is the root. So C sharp's the root, that's the third, that's the fifth, and then that's the seventh right there. So this root, uh, or the first inversion here, once again, will be a six, five, like that. Once a uh, sharp four, six, five, and then a five, six, five. Now, in my book, Sight Reading and Harmony, I don't emphasize necessarily learning Roman numerals from the beginning. I think if you're a beginner and you're just learning harmony, you, you might want to try learning these just the names of the chords like G minor, F sharp diminished, and, and don't worry so much about all these Roman numerals. But I just wanted to include the Roman numerals in this video for the slightly more advanced students that are getting into Roman numerals and want to do that. So um, hopefully this has helped you to make sense of this uh, this little table here, this chart that, that we uh, that we have. It's like a little cheat sheet to help you understand the chords up here. And then this down here, of course, as you probably figured out by now, is uh, my little little cheat sheet on how to remember chords. And there are only seven possibilities. Virtually all chords that you're going to play in music are derived from one of these seven possibilities down here. So it's a good idea to memorize these groups of letters, and that will help you tremendously in understanding music theory and making sense of these uh, chord charts here. So stay tuned for more videos like this in the series, and I, and I thank you uh, for watching this video.